Hello and welcome to game 63 from CCC 9's semi-finals. Lila is playing white and Komodo is black. And they started with e4 and knight f6. And this is the Ayekin defense, named after the fourth world champion. Black's idea is to tempt white's pawns forward and allow white to create a big center and then try to collapse it by attacking the center with the flank pawns and with the pieces in the spirit of the hypermodern openings. And here best move for white is e5. White wants to win some time by harassing this knight. Knight d5 and here c4 could come but first white chooses here to play d4. And here now after d6 we reach the end of the book and in this position Lila now played c4. We have knight d6 and white here has a lot of options. He can play knight f3 which is called the modern variation of um, the Ayekin defense. But this runs into the spin with bishop g4 or could run into a pin with bishop g4. Another option is f4. This is called the four pawns attack. And this is actually what Komodo played in the other game but Lila managed to hold the draw. Or white can take here on d6 as Lila did and this is called the exchange variation. And here black has again a lot of options. He can take with both pawns and even with the queen. Komodo chose to take with the e pawn and now Lila continued with knight c3. We have bishop e7 and just normal development from both sides, castles. And now since Lila already played bishop d3 she doesn't want to play knight f3 and run into this pin. So she developed the knight to e2. And in this position black has again many options. Knight c6 is the most popular but there was also played bishop g4 and knight a6. But also the less popular c5 and this is what Komodo chose to play. And there aren't many games in the database with this. I, I could find a couple where um, Black managed to win, but they weren't GMs. However, they played against GMs and they managed to win with Black. So probably C5 is not that bad. Lila played here now D5, which is a very logical move. Takes away C6 from this knight on B8 and makes Black's queenside development much more difficult. And now after G6, we have a completely new position in this opening and Black's idea is quite simple. It wants to restrict this bishop which is a quite strong bishop for white and it could be used very well in the attack. So with g6 now this bishop is biting into this wooden g6 pawn. And now the game continued with castles, knight d7 and this knight wants to go to e5 to attack this bishop and also this pawn on c4. And this would now make this uh, b6 knight very very happy because it would have a body to help out in the attack of this um, c4 pawn. So Lila immediately stopped that idea with f4 denying e5 from the knight and now we have f5 <clears throat> and here Lila attacks this pawn on f5 with g4. Of course she wants to take here because let's say black plays something bad. If white takes here and black has to recapture with the pawn then we can see that this pawn is, uh, is kind of weak and not only that but now this diagonal is a lot weaker. And actually after knight g3 this pawn is very hard to defend. This knight would have to go back to b8 in order to allow this bishop to defend the pawn. Knight f6 just drops the pawn. So after g4 Komodo had to take on g4 and now Lila played knight g3 and uh, in the future maybe she could get in f5 and now this queen is attacking this pawn on g4 and black can defend it with h5 because then he drops the pawn on g6 but Black doesn't need to defend this pawn because after let's say something like f6 if the queen takes here then it runs into this nasty discovery with knight e5 and this would be actually very very good for black. So after bishop f6 Lila instead played 
a4 which is a very strong move she's threatening to actually trap this knight on b6 which doesn't have squares and Komodo could make room for that knight with bishop d4 check and after king f1 play knight f6 and after a5 knight d7 but why allow the pawn to move forward and give white extra options maybe with a6 and also lose the b6 square instead much better here after bishop d4 check and king h1 is to play a5 as in the game and this fixes now the spawn on a4 the knight is still attacking the spawn the knight doesn't need to move from b6 and maybe bishop d7 will come at some point with extra pressure on that pawn of course white will want to play b3 here at some point to defend these two but that is dangerous because that weakens this long diagonal and this bishop could become much more dangerous so lila has to be careful the game continued now with knight b5 obviously b5 is now a big hole and lila is attacking both d6 and d4 and instead of defending passively this pawn on d6 komodo went for a counter attack with uh, queen h4 He's uh, defending this pawn on g4 and he's planning to come with the knight to h5 and challenge this very strong defender on g3. And instead of taking this pawn on d6 or the bishop, Lila now played rook a2, which is a very, very good move. She wants to transfer this rook to the king side to defend, and she's also allowing now this pawn to go to b3 and defend these two pawns on a4 and c4 and that would allow the bishop and the rook to do some other more important stuff these multi-purpose moves are pretty cool komodo now continued with knight f6 b3 knight h5 knight takes queen takes rook g2 and now bishop d7 and he wants to take out this knight so lila consider that it's high time now to take this very powerful bishop on d4 c takes on d4 and now we have bishop a3 she's attacking now the d6 pawn with the bishop alternatively she could uh, also go with the bishop to b2 and attack this pawn on, on d4 but she preferred the pawn on d6 and at this point they both agreed that black is already kind of losing this the game continued now with knight c8 what else this knight wasn't doing anything now on b6 since um, a4 and c4 are nicely defended by the b3 pawn. So Komodo is rerouting now this knight to the king side. Lila continued now with bishop e2 and she's attacking the g4 pawn three times and she's also attacking this pawn on d4. Komodo played here knight e7 and he's allowing both pawns to be captured but actually taking the d4 pawn would lose the advantage because now Komodo could play knight f5 with tempo on the queen and he's now defending this pawn on d6 and after queen d3 anticipating queen h3 attacking b3 Lila could take now here pawn takes and after rook f2 black is actually doing very well the knight defends d6 and by the time lila manages to get rid of the knight komodo will be able to defend the pawn on d6 and this is pretty good for black however after knight e7 lila chopped off this pawn on d6 and now knight f5 of course is not possible because that drops this rook on f8 komodo continued with rook e8 and now we have a lot of exchanges the bishop takes on g4 bishop takes queen takes queen takes rook takes and this resulting end game maybe doesn't look that bad for uh, for black he's a pawn down but maybe he has chances but no he doesn't this is completely crushing for white especially thanks to this very very strong bishop on d6 first of all this bishop is uh, threatening to go to c5 or e5 and pick up this pawn and then white would be two pawns up and that is completely winning and it's very hard to to come up with something for black because this knight is in a very unfortunate pin if black tries to unpin with rook f6 then there's bishop e5 and black doesn't have time to come with the knight to f5 to defend d4 
or if black tries rook f7 and then intends knight f5, well, then white has rook e1, placing this knight into another pin. And after something like king f8, this knight is now pinned in two directions. White can just play bishop c5 and again this pawn will be lost. Rook d8, bishop d4 and it's just game over. So, not having really many options, Komodo actually decided to give up the exchange in order to defend the pawn on d4, the last hope that he has left in this position. So he played knight f5 and this now not only gives up the exchange but also gets rid of this very strong bishop but unfortunately for him this resulting position is, is still bad is still losing there's nothing to do lila now played rook g1 and she's intending to exchange one of the rooks that would make everything a lot more easier and now if this rook comes down to e3 to attack this pawn on b3 then uh, Lila could play here rook e1 because after rook takes on b3 this king is now cut away and pushing the pawns forward wins for white. But if white doesn't want to allow any kind of counterplay then after rook e3 he can play first rook b1 to defend the pawn and then go to the e5 with the other rook and then go to e4 and attack this pawn and then come closer with the king and it's game over. So after rook g1, Komodo preferred to play knight e3, and now we have rook f2, rook e4. Komodo is attacking this pawn on f4, but now this knight is placed into another pin with rook e1. And this now allows after king e7, f5, and Lila gets rid of her, her weak pawn, because now if the pawn takes and rook takes, this knight is pinned. Exchanging these rooks would be completely winning for Lila. We now have king d6, rook f6 check, king c5, rook e6 trying to exchange the pair of rooks, rook f4 and now Lila decides to actually give back the exchange and win another pawn and this is now completely winning rook and game for white. After h5 Lila played rook d3 and she's now threatening to simply push up this pawn and queen it so the king had to block the pawn and here a simple win would be c5 to force the king to unblock the pawn and now after d6 this king can't stop the pawn anymore so rook f8 is forced and after d7 and rook d8 king g2 and this is just a simple win white is just picking up this pawn on h5 and black has to play king c6 at some point and then take this pawn and after the rook exchange this pawn just quite simply promotes and white wins. But Lila went for another plan and now here after king d6 Lila actually played king g2 and after h4 rook e3 and rook f7 her idea is to create a bridge for this king and then allow it to go to d4, play c5, go with the king to c4 and b5 and win down these pawns on the queen side. And really there's nothing uh, black can do here and after a little back and forth and some checks eventually the king will get to d4 and c5 comes and the king is getting to b5 and of course in the meantime black can take this pawn on h2 but his h pawn is easily stopped by Lila's rook. And now we have rook takes, king takes, rook e2, b4, rook e8, king b6, rook f8, b5. And as soon as this rook gets behind his passed pawn, Lila blocks that pawn with her rook. Rook h7, and now she wins the b7 pawn. And after rook g7 and rook takes on h4, she has four passed pawns here. The win is pretty clear. We have now king e7, rook h6 and from here on Lila does her usual stuff. Basically everything that is possible from uh, this position with this material. Covering a lot of miles with the king and the rook. Giving up a pawn. Promoting to queen. Then promoting to bishop. Then giving up to queen. And then getting another queen and then giving up the second queen and then giving up the bishop 
and eventually she mates with um, Rook and King. But I won't show all of that because I'm sure you have better things to do. So here after another 50 moves or so at move 167, finally she mates with the Rook. This was a, a very easy looking Ayakin defense for, for White. Maybe Black's 8th move, C5, or his ninth move, G6, wasn't the best. But all in all, this was another great game from Lila, who made it look again very easy. Please subscribe, like and share, and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye bye.